morning, Crossroads family. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning. You know, we're going to bring church right to your living room today. And, you know, this is going to be fun. You can show up late to church and nobody will notice. Um, But, you know, we serve a great God. We serve a God uh, whose presence isn't confined to the walls of a church. His presence um, isn't confined to how we feel or our circumstances. So I just encourage you this morning um, just to engage wherever you are. And, you know, we're just praying and believing uh, that you're going to encounter God this morning, that you're going to encounter his presence, and that there will just be an overflow of the Spirit all across this region. So let's just worship together this morning. so great Jesus in all things I've seen a glimpse of your heart a billion years still I'll be singing how can I praise you enough how can I praise you enough you are the Lord stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares Creation calls all to the Savior We are alive for Your praise in earth and sky no one is higher I got a wonders you reign I got a wonders you reign You are the Lord Almighty I shine in all the stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares You are the Lord Almighty I shine in all the stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares Shining 
all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Oh, nothing else compares. You are the Lord Almighty. Outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Oh, nothing else compares. Nothing else compares. You've overcome. This world with love and made my fight your own. I lift my eyes and throw fear aside and sing out into the night. Cause even when the world gives, even when the fight calls, even when the wars rage. Take heart, I know you are greater, forever you will say you're, I will sing your praise, with all that I have, with all that I am, Lord, stay down the waves, cause you own the time. I'll steal my soul, and know you wait for me in waters wild where faith walks above the storm cause even when the world escapes even when the fight calls even when the wars waste I'll take heart I know you are greater you Savior, I will sing your praise with all that I have, with all that I am, Lord. With all that I have, with all that I am, Lord. I won't let the storm within my heart, I won't let the darkness bring me down. See in the night my hope alive. I'll walk through the fire and not be burned Pray in the fight and watch it turn Jesus, today I give it all to you And I won't let the soul within my heart Won't let the darkness beat me down Sing in the night my hope alive in you I'll walk through the fire and not be burned Pray in the fight and watch it turn Jesus, today I give it all to you. Cause even when the world caves, even when the fight calls, even when the wars rage, I'll take heart. I know you are greater. Forever you will say, God, I will sing your praise. With all that I have, with all that I I'll walk through the fire and not be burned Pray in the fight and watch it turn Jesus, today I give it all to you And I won't let the storm within my heart Won't let the darkness beat me down Sing in the night my hope alive in you And I'll walk through the fire and not be burned
walk through the fire and not be burned. Pray in the fire to watch your turn. Jesus, today I give it all to you. Yeah, Jesus, today I give it all to you.
trial Your love surrounds us Oh, you give us peace You give us joy You give us hope You lift her of our heads Oh, Jesus Great 
your faithfulness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we have to gather together as the church. And Lord, you said that wherever two or more are gathered in your name, that which they ask, Father, that you will hear and you will give to them. And so today, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. And we have a few prayer requests we want to lift up right now with you as you are sitting at home. Uh, we ask that you would engage in prayer right now with us. We're going to pray for three things. Number one, we're asking the Lord for a hedge of protection around all of our CLC family members, members in our community. Uh, and we're going to pray also for all the healthcare workers that are currently, uh, uh, they're not at home. They're not with their families. They are on the front lines. Uh, so we're going to pray a hedge of protection around them. We're going to pray health and strength and safety over their lives. And any in our communities currently that are suffering right now with fear, with anxiety, um, and uh, panic as a result of the, this outbreak. And so we want to lift that up right now. Why don't you just take a moment? We serve a great God. Amen. So Lord Jesus, we just come before you, Father, with faith. We know, God, that we can trust in your great name. We know, Lord, that you see all of this, the beginning and the end, because that's who you are. You see everything. And so, Lord, we're asking right now for a hedge of protection. Uh, over all of uh, our community of believers, oh God. We're asking for a hedge of protection around each family member at CLC. Lord, from the strongest to the most uh, vulnerable and the weakest among us, oh God. We're asking, Lord, that you would... Um, cover us with your blood. Father, we thank you that we are a part of the covenant uh, of God and that we are uh, standing on the promises of God. And we thank you, Lord, that this would pass us by. God, that this would not touch any or ail any in our community, God, but that it would pass us by. And so, Lord, we also thank you. We lift up every healthcare worker right now across our nation uh, who is uh, uh, slaving away and working on the job, on the front lines. God, we're asking, we're lifting them up to you, Father. We're praying, Father, for wisdom over their lives. We're praying, Father, for supernatural protection over their lives. Health, oh God. We pray even that their sleep would be sweet. And God, that they would see uh, breakthroughs, even in medicine, that they would see the hand of God in each of those hospitals. Father, uh, I thank you for even Christians on the front lines who are ushering in the presence of God as they go to work. We thank you for them. Strengthen them today. And any in our communities right now, God, that are suffering with fear, anxiety, or panic concerning this ma matter, Father, we're asking, Lord, that you, the Prince of Peace, would come and rule and reign in our hearts. Lord, that we would uh, submit all of our fear to you, that we would cast our care, cast our fear upon you, Lord, and we would take on your burden, which is light, and your yoke, which is easy. So we're thanking you, Father, that there's a divine exchange that can take place as we call upon your name. Lord, everything that we have need of, it's in you, Jesus. And so we're looking to you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, I just wanted to bring to your attention uh, three ways that you can continue to give as we meet together from home to home. Uh, we're continuing church as normal. It's just online. That's the only difference. So we have three different ways that you can give today. Once again, you can give on our CLC app. Just click the give button. If you haven't downloaded that, it's the Crossroads Life Church app in any of your app stores on your smartphone. And then also online at myclc.ca forward slash give. You can give online. Uh, and also, we want to encourage you, if you aren't smartphone capable or you don't have internet, you can also mail in check or cash. And in the envelope, make sure you write down who you are and what you want your money to go towards, tithes or offerings or other. So thank you so much for being with us. We pray that you would have a great week and enjoy this message. All right. Good morning, Crossroads Life Church. It is uh, different <laughs> to be with you uh, through the means that we're communicating to you today. I so miss seeing you face to face. I so miss each and every one of you in uh, both services and being able to greet you personally and uh, minister to you 
uh, those of you who would often respond uh, or come forward for something or need or greeting you in the hallway and seeing your kids and touching you, shaking hands, giving you a hug. Uh, we miss all that, don't we? And uh, actually, maybe, maybe that's a really good thing. Maybe, if nothing else, that through uh, the social distancing that has is, that is been called for at this time, perhaps we will learn to really appreciate church, really appreciate our corporate gatherings, really appreciate the fact uh, that we actually can come together collectively, and, and hopefully it won't be for too long, but whatever amount of time it is, I pray and I hope that we will all so miss getting together that uh, when it does, when we do resume uh, collective services together physically, uh, we, will, we will just rush here and pack the place out because we so desire to be together again. But in the meantime, we are going to come to you through uh, this means of video, and uh, I want to thank you for joining me this morning, and uh, trust that this, this message will be a real blessing to you today. But also, um, just want to uh, remind you to uh, remember us in your prayers uh, remember the church, uh, remember the church family, and we're also preparing, we're, we're looking at different venues that we might be able to come to you and get you connected uh, for small groups, get you connected for the Purple Book. Those of you who are in the Purple Book, we're looking for a venue. Uh, we haven't quite nailed it down yet, but we're looking to do that. And also, we're excited about uh, Prayer Summit. We're excited about being able to find a venue where we can come together and have our prayer summit, and we might actually bump up the frequency and have one a week uh, because, you know, we're not coming together, and it's just good to... There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot of things to pray about. We need to pray for one another. And uh, so all those good things are, are coming, and maybe this is a real blessing in disguise. I think in some ways it really is. Um, that uh, good things will come out of this. And so, uh, so let's dive into the Word this morning. <clears throat> I want to talk to you. You know, what do you do to remind yourself of important inv- events and things in life? Uh, most of us have some kind of a system, even if it's as simple as a, uh, a kitchen calendar that we write down events or a small whiteboard hung somewhere in the house where we uh, write down appointments and events and kids' events that are coming up, and, and, you know, maybe birthday parties and stuff like that. Some are a little more sophisticated. You know, they get into the iPad and the iPhone and get into Google, and, and, uh, and they use electronic means to uh, keep track of things. You know, I have, a ver- I have <clears throat> reduced the whole process and simplified the entire process for me. On my desk, I simply have two piles, and one says urgent, and the other one says, too late. <clears throat> All kidding aside, remembering, remembering is a significant part of living above storms. We're currently in what I would call a storm. It's, you know, nothing is normal right now. Some people would be having a very, very, very difficult time with this. Some of you no doubt are. And nothing is normal. Everything is suddenly changed. It's like the rug has been pulled out from under us and, you know, some of us are kind of isolated a little bit and we're, we're social distancing and, and we, you know, we're not sure what we can do, what we can't do. And can we go to the store or can't we go to the store? I know Jan went to just to pick something up and had to wait outside. There was only eight people in the store, but they said, hey, we can only let that many in right now, and then when they're gone, we'll let eight more in, and it's like, wow, what a change. What what a change of atmosphere. What a change of feeling. We've never never lived with these conditions. Uh, You know, in the 60-plus years that I've been alive, I've never seen this. So it's really different, but I want you to know we're in a storm, but remembering, what I'm going to talk to you about today, remembering is a significant part of living above the storm. 
We all go through storms. We all go through trials. We all face challenges of different sorts in life. But perhaps what's unusual is when we uh, are all, like the entire global population, is facing a threat as such as we currently are. And what we need to keep in mind, first of all, is that we control our airspace. And what I mean by that is we have control over what we listen to and what we allow others to deposit in our mind and in our spirit and how we think and, and process and respond uh, to the current challenges of our day. We have to own that. That's something that I feel that God has put on my heart to encourage you is to remember and to be reminded. In uh, Second, uh, Second Peter uh, chapter 3, Peter uh, writes this to those that he's, you know, this is not a particular church or a particular person that he's written his epistles to. They're general epistles that went out to the diaspora or all the Christians that had been scattered all over. And so this was like, these were general epistles that he wrote out, uh, sent out. And he says, this is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, I've tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking, and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this word. We thank you for the scripture. And Lord, I just pray that this word will both encourage but also equip people to live above the storm in these times. And so, Father, I just pray your blessing upon this word, upon every ear and upon every heart that is hearing it and receiving it right now. Let your presence inundate them right now in their home, where they are. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. And all God's people said, right, I heard that. <clears throat> Peter is acknowledging that one of the main purposes uh, for his letters are to serve as a reminder of what has already been taught, things that they knew from the Old Testament Scripture, things that they knew you know, about Abraham, about Noah, about Joseph, about Jacob, about David, about all these patriarchs of Israel, lessons from their life, life lessons that speak to us today. He says, I want you to be reminded of what the Holy Prophet said and also the things that were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ and the things that he did and uh, that were, that were uh, imparted to you through his apostles. You know, we need to be reminded, don't we? we? We just seem to have a limited capacity for keeping things in view, even when they're important things. Obviously, there's an enormous number of things that uh, can drown out the sound of God's voice that can uh, shift our attention, especially uh, in times like this where, where there's so much information to process and so many voices uh, out there. Uh, we, we possess a unique ability and capacity to exist in both the natural world and to process the information we need to operate in the natural world along with our ability to operate and live in the spirit as Christians. So we, we live in a natural world. We receive information. We, uh, we've received all kinds of information about social distancing and precautions to take and things we need to be aware of. But also, there's, there's another side to our lives as Christians, and that is, what is the Holy Spirit saying to us? What is the Spirit of God saying to us? Obviously, first of all, we understand that we need to um, honor, respect, and submit to civil leadership, to uh, the leadership of our, of our county, of our town, of our province, and of our nation. And, and we need to pray for them. They, they are, they're, they're faced with incredibly hard choices. It's so, so easy for us to criticize it's so easy for us to second-guess them. It's so easy for us to be armchair quarterbacks and think, you know, well, if I was the prime minister, I would have done this, or if I was Doug Ford. Listen, what we need to do 
is pray for them, but pray specifically for them that God will speak to them, that, that God will drop a word of wisdom that will be for the benefit of all the people in our nation and all the people in our province. That, you know, God sets leaders in place and he can also turn their hearts, turn their minds and speak. But we, as the people of God, believe me, ungodly people are not praying for our leaders. So the only group that has that intercessory authority is the church. And so I would plead with you to remember your leaders daily. Pray for them. Pray for us too as church leaders, but pray for all those who are in authority. And um, we, we have that ability, but we need to operate in the natural world, but also operate in the spirit. And I think my feeling is that in these times, we need to lean a little deeper into God's spirit and less into the cacophony of voices that we hear in the news that are, you know, sometimes even bringing, you know, different reports. You know, you go on Facebook and people are saying this and and then people are countering with that and this, and it's just like, oh my gosh, enough already. Let's, Let's pray. Let's get into the word. Let's listen to some good podcasts like this. Let's, let's get into the scripture and, and let's edify ourselves. And, and because believe me, if, if you will do that, you will come out edified. You'll, you'll begin to rise above the storm in your own spirit. And this is obviously all, all, also one of the reasons why we need to gather as the church and and. Obviously, we're trusting God that that is going to be restored to us uh, sooner than later, but uh, because we need to be continually stimulated uh, in the things of our spirit. We need to be reminded. We need to be built up. We need to be called and brought into a renewing and renewal experience established in our faith, as well as experiencing the rich bounty of blessing that comes to us through face-to-face fellowship with one another. And... um, Already, when this is you know our first Sunday doing this, and I miss you, you know I, I just miss seeing you, and I, I hope that you feel the same way. But I'm sure you do with with all all your church family. And so, this morning we're gonna we're gonna look at a couple of psalms that speak about the importance of remembering, calling to mind, and rehearsing God's works and God's faithfulness not only for ourselves, but also for the generation that is coming up behind us. And so I want to, uh, we're going to look at both Psalm uh, 77 and Psalm 78. And beginning with Psalm 77, starting at verse 10, we're going to look at four verses, Psalm Psalm 77, verse 10 to 14. Uh, It says, I will remember, I will remember the years of the right hand of the most high what's he talking about the right the right hand of the most high well the right hand of god whenever there's several references to his right hand in scripture and what it means is the hand that operates the hand that works the hand that is touching the hand that is moving the hand that is doing miracles it means that that executive hand, that hand that, you know, most people are right-handed. I have a daughter who's left-handed. This is no slight against people who are left-handed. But it's just that the scripture means the right hand, that hand that is operating, that hand that is, that is working and moving. And um, the psalmist says, he, he's, he purposely says, I will call to mind. I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will, rem- I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. Also, I will meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. A lot of stuff here that we can unpack. But you know, when he says, your way, O God, is in the sanctuary, we understand that in our corporate gatherings, as the church is focused in our heart, in our spirit, in our mind on Jesus, 
And we are worshiping and lifting the name of Jesus together in song and in, and in just praise and open praise and worship as we call it. Uh, there is a sense in which God's presence is, is among us in a very special way. We know the scripture, the teaching, Psalm 22 and 3, that you are holy, O thou, that, is, that inhabits or is enthroned upon the praises of Israel, the praises of your people. We understand those aspects, but sometimes I think we take it for granted. We don't understand. This scripture says, your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. It's in that place where we are collectively gathered and we are worshiping and we're focused on you. And your way is there. There's something that you are actively doing by your right hand to minister and to strengthen and to touch and to release grace into our hearts and into our spirit and into our lives. Just there's something about that. He says it's in the sanctuary. It's in that holy place of your presence. He says, I will remember. It's like a declaration. He's, he's describing an act of his will that I will do this. It's, it's not, you know, if, if, if you take life so casually that you don't stir your will towards things, and particularly the things of God, you will, you will find that those things will pass you by. You, you may not see much happen. But the psalmist says, I will do this. I'll take control of my will, and I will direct my will towards you, and I'll direct my mind towards the things that you have done in the past, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember your works. And then he says, I will meditate upon your work. And the Hebrew word used in the original for meditate, uh, it has nothing to do with you know tying your body up like a pretzel and moaning or contemplating going into deep thought. Biblical meditation is intrinsically verbal. That's right. You heard me right. Biblical meditation is verbal. It actually means to mutter. It gives the picture of a lion uh, groaning and roaring over its prey. And uh, it means to soliloquize. You know, we all know what a soliloquy is, is when uh, someone is talking to themselves, you know, out loud. They're, they're pondering something and they're talking. And, and some of us have a habit of doing that. We, some people process verbally and they do it to themselves and they're thinking and talking. I had a boss who used to walk around talking to himself out loud. And uh, sometimes you know, you'd catch him. You'd be, walk back into the warehouse and you'd hear this voice and you'd go around the corner and there he was with his pipe and he'd be sitting there talking out loud like he was having a conversation. Then he'd realize you were there. And he would just turn and say, hey, uh, what's up, John? <laughs> he was soliloquizing. Well, biblical meditation actually is about that. It's about taking Scripture and, you know, memorizing Scripture, committing it to memory, and then speaking it out loud muttering it, speaking it. It doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to, but muttering it, speaking it, contemplating it, chewing it. Uh, one biblical uh, definition of, of meditation is to, is to chew, like a cow chewing its cud. You keep bringing it up and you're chewing on it and you're verbalizing it as you do. You're rehearsing something over and over and over verbally. Moving on to Psalm 78, Starting at verse 1, we're going to look at the first seven verses. The psalm says, Oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I'm saying, for I'll speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Hidden lessons. You know, sometimes when you go back and you read what God did in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and the Gospels, there are hidden lessons in there. There are hidden applications that you can extract out that speak to you today and in your circumstance and in your situations because there's so much that God did. There's so many people who were in distress in situations that they were facing. They prayed, they looked to the Lord, they called on God, and sometimes God just showed up by his grace and his mercy. There's so many things that we can learn. 
I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors have handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. So it's, it's speaking to us, but it's also a command and instruction to us to be rehearsing things to our children. You know, how are your children processing everything that's going on? How are your children doing with, you know, the virus and, you know, social distancing? And is there any fear? Is there any concern? Are we just giving them medical information or are we building their faith? to understand that God is with us. We do not have to fear. God, no matter what happens, God is with us. It's not just take these precautions and hope we don't get it. What if you did get it? What if someone in the family did get it? What if someone did get sick? What if, what if, you know, what if, what if, what if? Are we teaching them faith? And this is what the scripture is saying is we're not gonna hide these truths from our children. We're not gonna hide how God showed up in desperate situations and delivered his people. Is we will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so that the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they in turn will teach their own children so each generation should set its hope anew in God, not forgetting his glorious miracles, not forgetting, being reminded, remembering his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Wow, what a powerful passage of scripture. So what what is this all about? What's to what end and what purpose uh, is this scripture written that we should be remembering and being reminded and, and teaching the next generation things of the past generations? Well, it's that they might know in their generation who God is and cultivate a living faith to know that God is ready and prepared to keep covenant with them just as he did there. It's not that these people were special and now we're not so special. You know, that, well, that was Israel and they were God's chosen people. And sometimes there's a theology like that. Listen, God has chosen you. God has chosen your family. God has chosen your children. Believe that and act like that. And let them know that that God has chosen them and God wants to work on their behalf. He wants to keep covenant. He wants them to know him and he wants them to see his mighty acts. That they might have their hope set in God, not, not their hope set in the government. You know, the government to the rescue, the social welfare system to the rescue. Folks, there may come a time when, there, when the safety nets are depleted. There may come a time when there is no social rescue. There may come a time when governments don't have the answer for something that we're facing. You know, one thing I do realize is that sometimes in a crisis like this, which is very large, and it's affected all of North America, Europe, Asia, you know, pretty well global. And now with things being shut down, it's, it's like... It's like a, a rock thrown into a pond and there's concentric circles of, that trigger other reactions. So first there's the virus, but now there's an economic response because of the social aspect of it, trying to flatten the curve, but that now affects business and affects people's jobs and livelihood. And we're all trying to adjust to that. And so, you know, it, and on and on, we don't know what is going to trigger something else. All I'm trying to say to you is that, believe me, uh, don't trust, do not trust in just what a government can do for you. We have to look to God. And that's why we have to pray for our government because they're wrestling with huge, huge decisions that affect everything in our society and everything in our culture. 
And so we need to put our trust in God. Um, you know, in, in days gone by, in, in ages gone by, in, in generations and in centuries gone by, in the history of the church, just in the last 2,000 years, you know, there were no social nets. People had to pray for a miracle. People had to pray and believe God to heal people. People had to work their way through very, very difficult uh, situations and circumstances. And we have a history of the church being an overcoming church and seeing God's supply and believing for his provision and for his power and for his grace and for his help. We have that in our lineage. And I want to assure you today that the cupboards of heaven are not bare, that heaven's resources have not been exhausted. And God has a miracle and an answer to prayer with your name on it. We need to remember that Jesus healed the paralytic, that Jesus cleansed lepers, that Jesus healed the blind and the mute, that Jesus cast out wicked spirits with a word and healed oppressed minds, that Jesus healed the woman who'd been bent over for 38 years and with a word and a touch he healed her. Jesus multiplied a few fish and, and loaves to feed 5,000 people. Peter kneeled down beside the bed of Dorcas, prayed, and then with a word he commanded her to rise, and she rose from the dead. The Lord worked unusual miracles through the hands of Paul when people brought scarves and hand handkerchiefs from his body, and then they went and laid them on the sick and the demonized, and they were delivered. Listen, this is our God. This is our Bible. This is our book. This is what we believe. And my Bible tells me that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we need to know that in these times, no matter what is ahead, God is alive. God is with us. God is not caught off guard. He's not surprised. He knows what we need before we ask, and yet he invites us to make request of him and make our request known to him. And so what I want to share with you in, in just closing this morning is to say that everything that we are facing in all these things, we need to remember that nothing has caught God by surprise. That we need to remember that he has worked for generations and generations and generations in every generation. We need to be reminded of what he, his, his faithfulness, his goodness, his power, his love, and we need to be reminding our children. And take this time, maybe this would be a great time, to take your children through some of the Old Testament stories and some of the New Testament stories and see this is what God did when there was famine in the land, how he preserved the widow in the time of Elijah and how he raised up Joseph to save a whole generation in a time of extended famine. Miracles, signs, wonders, all kinds of things that God did. That is the God we serve. So as we close this morning, I want to just pray for you and pray that your heart will be just full of faith and confidence as you rehearse for yourself the faithfulness of our God, the goodness of our God. You know, <clears throat> I was on vacation recently, as you know, and while I was on vacation, I received a phone call from a pastor in Edmonton. And he said, hey, John, um, I just wanted to talk to you and tell you a great report of something that happened while you were here in our church that I didn't even hear about until this week. And I said, wow, that's great. What, what is it? And he said, you know, you were giving some words of knowledge for healing. And you call, you, all you did, you just called out lungs. You said, there's someone here or some people here who have lung conditions. God wants to heal you. And you were asking people to come forward, but this person who did have a lung condition just slipply lifted their hand and you prayed for them. Well, what had happened is the, one of the elders in that church is a, is a doctor. 
And this person went to uh, that doctor and said, you know, I'm really experiencing um, something, you know, weird going on in my lungs. I, shortness of breath, sensations, pain, just like, I don't know, something's going on. And so the doctor who has, you know, he's not a young doctor. He's, he's, he's been around for a long time and he specializes in diagnosis. That's his specialty. He had him go in immediately and, and get some chest x-rays. So he got the x-rays back. He looked at them and there was, both lungs were filled with a black mass, like just, and he's seen it several times before. He knew immediately that it was lung cancer. So he didn't say anything. He said, look, I'm going to send you to a specialist right away. I'm going to get you in right away. And uh, you need to go see someone. It, it, It doesn't look good. Well, that was the week before. He came to church on the weekend, responded to the word of knowledge, received prayer, and it was just a prayer. I didn't touch him. He stayed in his seat, prayed for him. And um, I never heard another thing until, until a couple of weeks ago when this pastor phoned me and he said, well, he went to the specialist. The specialist also took x-rays and he, and he came back in and he said, well, I don't, know, I don't know why you were sent to see me because your lungs are perfect. There's not even anything. And, and the guy said, after Sunday, he noticed that the shortness of breath had disappeared, any sensations that he had had disappeared, the pain had disappeared. And he said, bottom line, John, is that the doctor told me, who's my elder, he said, he was healed of lung cancer because I asked for a copy of those x-rays and I compared them. And in one x-ray, his lungs were full of cancer and the next one, they were as clean as like they were brand new. And he said he hasn't had a problem since, that's been two years ago. So now I can't take any credit for that. But I want to say that a storm hit that man's life. And, you know, lung cancer is, you know, even if it's a non smoker's lung cancer, 100% fatal. But God intervened, God showed up, God did something in the midst of that storm and released his healing power through a word of knowledge and a simple prayer. And a miracle, and I got to tell you, for me, that I, as I recall, in all uh, my years of ministry, I can't remember. I've seen some dramatic healings through words of knowledge, but I think that's the first time I've had someone healed of lung cancer. I can't take any credit, but I'm thankful that the Lord allows us to get in on it. And so I just want to encourage you today, again, that we need to remember what God has done. That's why we have testimonies of healings, and we share these things so that you might be encouraged to know that God is still working today. Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every one who has heard this message today. And Father, I just pray that you would fill them to the brim and overflow in their lives and in their hearts, in their families, in their children, in their marriages. Maybe they're facing a critical shortage financially. Maybe they're facing a layoff. Maybe they're facing uh, a work stoppage. Maybe they're facing an issue in their marriage. Maybe they're facing some kind of a challenge with a child or a teenager or a young person. Maybe, maybe there's conflict in the workplace uh, with a coworker or a business partner. Maybe, perhaps there's a sickness or a diagnosis or whatever it might be today, whatever challenge. Maybe they're uh, just really overwhelmed with this whole COVID-19 thing and, and they're just really fearful about it. Maybe someone they know has it. Uh, maybe there's an elderly person. May, who knows? Father, the many, many things that can befall us. But Lord, today, I pray that they will be filled with assurance and filled with faith and that they will rehearse. They will begin to remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. And like David did, when David went into battle, he did not go into battle uh, with Goliath before us, remembering what the Lord had done with the lion and the bear. And he remembered that he'd slew the, the lion and the bear that went after his father's sheep with his simple slingshot. And so when he faced down Goliath, he went in knowing 
that God was going to do the same thing again. He used his past victories to establish his future victories. And Lord, I pray today with whatever people might be facing, that they will remember that you are a great God, you're an awesome God, and they'll remember and bring to mind your mighty miracles. And so, Father, we thank you for that today, and we bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, and thank you for joining me on this video today.